Hey guys, welcome to another episode in the deep playthrough of Grand Turismo 7. We will be doing a menu book which uh, requires us to erase this little 400 pp. Uh, we are in a mini um, race this mini in the European Sunday Cup 400 which will give us the Fiat car displayed on top and that will conclude the menu book. Three laps against eight AI opponents. Here we go. There's one thing I wanted to check out. Uh, in between. And that is... Assist settings. I'm just going to play around a little bit with the ABS. Because off is apparently much slower than default even the top GT drivers use default but I'm, I'm just going to use weak to just get a, f a little bit of a feel what it does compared to default and then there is also this head wobbling race info no ghost no display image where is the head wobbling? That is apparently something you can adjust within the race. Um, sorry, force feedback, nope. Also still don't know what to do with these settings by the way. Also really weird that 5 is not really in the middle. I mean it makes sense if you start off with 1, but still. Um, yeah, I didn't see it had wobbling. One moment guys, I am going to, because otherwise I will forget if I don't do it now. Uh, GT7 head wobble settings. Do you use wobble cam one or wobble cam two? Which uh, I really like number two, which is not set as default, and you have to find it in the settings while driving only. Yes, that's what I'm doing now. It is here in this view attached. Have you played this view? I like the way it throws the driver and car around much more and when played with new haptic feedback or a time. Adjust cockpit view, orientation. All right, so it's again, one of those super obscure Japanese games set settings, just like Um, Metal Gear Solid has often very vague, uh, obscure button combinations, but I think, what did I see? Was here, and then cockpit, here, adjust cockpit view, here, god damn it, man. Hate that, this is all pretty fine. And then here, wobbling, let's do wobbling type 2. see what it does. Here we go. Right, back into the game. I must say, it's a little bit too much. Oh shit. Ah, that's maybe because I don't have the um, ABS on. I have no idea. Or at least on weak. But there's a little bit too much saturation I find in that car in front. That Audi. pretty fine I would say. Right, I have no idea how this track goes. Uh, also the head wobble, I don't see that much difference. Shit, I do think 
that having ABS weak makes quite a difference. This car is all over the place when I try to uh, brake hard. Of course it's a front wheel drive car. A lot of weight on the front. driver bonus because I'm pretty much God damn it, what a messy race. I uh, already hit the wall. Let's try this again. Sound of this car is really boring. Of course, it's just a regular consumer hatch. You know what? Uh, I'm not sure that's a uh, correct term, but it's just a regular commuter car. This sound really is quite terrible, I must say. I do like it with ABS weak because it does force you to not brake very hard while doing steering inputs. So I think just like in real life, that makes you. out just like I did almost over there. Man, those first two they are pretty quick. I may need to tune my car a bit. That's where I'm losing a lot of time before breaking in that corner. No need to do that. Ah, God damn it! I won't be making this right. Maybe do or die attempt at this corner. to get first place. 
maybe let's mess about a little bit with settings. Um, ah, we cannot really mess with. Ah, God damn it! I forgot to put on my. Ah no, I put the racing tires on another car. Sorry. Um, here, detailed settings. Let's at least make the car a little bit. Read description. All right, why can't I? Ah, because I probably don't have uh, fully adjustable springs. All right, not that much we can do, but I think I can still win if I just am a little bit quicker in that uh, middle section. That's, uh, to the left you see the um, circuit, it's that bottom corner, that's the one that I need to take faster. Alright, here we go, no more kidding rooms. You can do this. Alright, we're in a good place now. rent a car but I still got a team racing bonus. Did 
just checking on this track a little bit, so the replay. Already get a bit familiar with it. Because we will be doing the circuit experience. Daytime quite quickly within one lap. Right, that's enough about that. And um, there will be more than enough replays coming up further in the playthrough, so let's not watch them all fully. Let's conclude that menu book and then start with the circuit experiences. Um, get out of here. Not really sure why the Polo GTI is in that. Um, Ranking. I mean, I understand the Fiat and the Mini being iconic, but the uh, Volkswagen Polo really is not, in my view. Collection European Hot Hatch is completed. Congratulations, you've got all three cars. This completes your European Hot Hatches collection. Once you've collected your rewards, I've got some stories to tell you about the cars. A pavilion has been made available. GT Auto a pavilion has been made available. Alright, Luca, what do you have to say about these old hatches? Are you familiar with the term hot hatch? It refers to hatchback cars with powerful engines and a sporty suspension. Take the high-performance TTI version of Volkswagen's first good generation Golf, which debuted in 76, 1976. It is now generally considered to be the very first hot hatch. This Polo is a successor to the original GTI. No, the Volkswagen Golf is, I mean, that GTI was also a Golf, right? The Polo is a successor to the original GTI. No, it's a different class. While brands such as England's Cooper and Italy's Abarth have been producing high performance models since the 50s. Porsche car and GT Auto. Alright, let's do that. We can do that. That's not too difficult. Visit car maintenance and service at GT Auto. The sketchy showcase pavilions are open and they look pretty interesting. But before we get into all that, this menu is about experiencing what GT Auto has to offer. If the tuning shop is about improving the car's performance, GT Auto is about customizing the way it looks. GT Auto is divided into three floors. Let's visit car maintenance and service just to start. I'm sure a few of your motors are looking a bit dirty after all the driving you've done, so let's give them a wash. Wash one of your cars at GT Auto, then come back here once you're done. Escape is alright. Man, these outros really are a bit too slow. is open and GT Auto is now open very nice let's quickly watch skates just to have the new icon disappear hey Oliver who is Oliver hi Sarah and you must be wrong gaming YouTube I've been hearing a lot about you nice to meet you I'm Oliver I'm a photographer here is Capes you can photograph your favorite car in over 2,500 spots around the world. You 
can go to these spots from the menu on your left, Switzerland, America, wherever you want. And you'll have access to a fully functional camera, so you will be able to get into details when creating your shots. It's a fantastic playground for a photographer like myself. By the way, are you familiar with photography using a camera? Uh, let's do no. Okay, don't worry, that's no problem. Let's start out by pushing the shutter button to take your first shots. So start out by selecting my first case. Let's get out there and take some cool photographs. Alright, where is my first shots? Let's assume it's this one. I picked out five spots for you to start with and I've already set it all up in advance. Choose one that you like and go to the camera menu and select shoot. Once you do this, it'll expand your horizons. Right. Um, I don't like these futuristic cars at all. I have a description of all these pictures. God damn it, there's a lot of content text related in this game. Descriptions of all these locations. Let's set up a shot on Via Porta Rosa, a snug little alleyway in Florence, Italy. In car mode, you can change out the present car for one of your own. Select change, select the car to pick something more to your liking. As this is a tight place, I suggest picking a small car. Remember that you can rotate your car 180 degrees by pressing the R2 button. Let's indeed do another car. Choose. Delete select car, yes. Place a new car. What is a pretty cool car that we currently have? And not written, none of them really is that much to my liking. I like this one and I like this one. Here we go. Now what we need, what do we need to do? We could uh, rotate it. Now let's compose your shot in camera mode. Under environment settings, you'll see the option to adjust the aspect ratio. Below that, you'll find the orientation, which can be set to either portrait or landscape. After deciding on the frame, you can use the right and left sticks to adjust the zoom and camera positions. Yeah, by the way, I think this is all easier with the controller instead of the wheel that I'm doing now. Yes, much easier. All good, select shoot once you've composed the perfect shot. All right, I would say, what the hell's aspect ratio? Let's do landscape. Can we also zoom? Hmm. All right, let's do a different ratio. Why am I? this close to the car suddenly. Um, let's do another one. All right. Um, I think we are pretty good to go for now. I will dive into scapes later. Nope. In effect, you'll be able to apply various effects to the photo you have taken. Preset effects are a simple way of giving your photos a unique look. Oh, hitting the 25 minute marker. 
Once you've applied an effect that's to your liking, retake your photo and save it. Alright, let's do a standard effect. Are the rear view mirrors that red? I don't understand what it's is reflecting there. Um, let's do a bit of vignettes. Vignettes really makes zero difference. Probably it's doing something in, on the bigger canvas in the background or something. No idea. Let's do a bit of this. Nope. Makes it feel like you're like high on something. Bleach bypass. I find it fine like it is. Let's check out scapes later on. Nope. Yes. Um, that was about it. Let's read the description. Porta Rosa, Florence, Italy. Porta Rosa. Um, is a street in front of the Palazzo d'Avanzati, which has stood at the heart of Florence since the 14th century. Today, the palace is open to the public as a museum that reconstructs Florentine homes of the Middle Ages. That is pretty cool. And what does that view icon, icon mean? You then have to. Just like cars, check out which one is new. No. The birthplace place of Dracula. I, I thought Dracula was from Romania or something, but this is the UK, so it's probably the writer or something. Looming darkly above the town are the ruins of Whitby Abbey, which are said to have served as an inspiration for Bram Stoker's gothic novel Dracula. Right, so indeed, it was um, the author. I just, just caught my eye. Just curious how many. sure about Miami if it really it looks cool but it also looks everything is so square and it looks industrial it's a beautiful nature of course there but just not 100% Sold on Miami. Maybe it's super cool. I've never been there, but I, of course, love Miami Vice, Crockett and Tops. And, and then the neon colors, lighting, it's also pretty cool. Yeah, maybe it's cool. I don't know. Alright, so we um, did escapes. We will be going to GT Auto in the next episode. I'm again way over the 25 minute marker. I should really pay the better attention to the time because the bigger the file, the less chance that YouTube will actually process it all up to uh, 4K 60 HDR. So guys, hope you enjoyed uh, this episode. Um, not that much done, but yeah, it's, it's a slow game. Um, We'll be continuing in the next one. Hope to see you there for the meantime. Don't forget always to keep on gaming. Later.